got that song up, so I won't sing it today, Florence. It's okay. I get, I get.
anything with that. God give me my answer to what's going on. Uh, people are getting in a backslidden condition. Uh, they're falling away from God. Uh, they've got every excuse in the world why not to come to church, but they have no excuse for why to be in church. Well, my daughter, my my son-in-law, my sister-in-law, my somebody told me not to come to church. I can remember whenever the parents used to run the house. And nobody could tell you not what to do. That's right. I can remember whenever it come church time, it didn't matter who was sick in church or what was going on in church, that everybody come to church. That's right. Well, to make a long story short, God convinced me that I'm still praying and seeking his face and everything's going well, and I want to know that for sure because I know I've had a lot of sickness and I maybe I've let the church down a little bit while I was in that sickness and God let me know I hadn't done that. I held up my end of the bargain, so I right. said, thank God. That's right. And, uh, mm -hmm. I, you know, sometimes you want to blame everything on yourself, and I was in one of those moods where I wanted to blame everything on myself. But God has a way of letting you know it's not all you. Yeah. And, uh, I've got my faults. I know that. I've got problems and, uh, that I have to pray for. And uh, every one of us do. But God's coming. Mm -hmm. And I, I had a scripture, and I was, had read my scripture several times, and I was reading it again yesterday morning, and I was reading it last night, and I was just asking the Lord what he had me to speak on, but I knew what my scripture was and how I needed to speak on it. And it's in Matthew, a very familiar scripture, going back to the basics one more time, chapter 26, starting verse 31. God knows exactly what we're going to do. Yes, he does. He knows exactly where we stand. He knows whether you play in church or whether you're really in the will of God. Amen. Uh, he knows what your heart is. A lot of people try to fool God with their heart. You can't fool God with your heart. He knows whether you love him or not. He knows whether you care or not. And I'm feeling a lot in my heart today that we're a lot like we were in the time whenever Jesus was getting ready to be crucified. I believe there's so many people that have lost their first love with Jesus Christ that it's almost scary to me to think that people have come to church and said they loved the Lord and said they cared for the Lord and now they're hunting a new way. They're hunting a, a better way to serve God. They're blaming everything on everybody else. It's everybody else's fault the reason I can't serve God. It's everybody else's fault the reason I can't do what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Honey, whenever it gets right down to the bottom of the barrel, it's us is the reason we have our problems. It's us the reason things aren't going right for us. Uh, but, but I also was asking the Lord, I said, Lord, I see that people that are coming to church seem like they're prospering better than us that are. I see them not sick. I see them be able to do anything they want to do. They can go anywhere they want to go. And then I was reminded this might be the last enjoyment they ever had. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because if they go to hell, they better enjoy life right now. That's right. They better. they better. You say, Brother Ken, you're saying everybody that's not here at church today, no, I'm not saying that. But I'm saying if they don't turn from their ways, what they're mm -hmm. doing right now, right. hell's going to wait. Mm -hmm. You say, Brother Ken, they're having church in their houses, they're praying in their houses. Not a bit for me. I've done that before, but, uh, you know, and whenever it was snow on the ground or something, but uh, it's not like having church, is it? It's not like being to present yourself before God. It's not like coming together and worshiping God. And I was, uh, this script, scripture here sort of tied in together with that because I looked at Peter and I thought, Peter really thought he loved Jesus. He really thought he had... Jesus on his heart, his mind, his soul. He really thought that everything that his life meant to him was Jesus. But whenever it got down to the right down to where it scrapes at, there was a problem, and Jesus knew that. Let me read the scripture to you here, and then I'm going to go on down and read some more scripture. Then said, saith Jesus unto them, all ye shall be offended because of me this night. For it is written, 
I will smite the shepherd, and the shepherd of the flock shall be scattered abroad. This is Matthew chapter 26, verse 31. <clears throat> but after I am risen again, I will go before you into Galilee. Peter answered and said unto him, Though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. In other words, Peter's saying, Lord, no matter what happens in my life, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be by your side. I'm going to be part of you. Even if it's my life, Lord, I'm part of you. I've heard people say that in church. Jesus said, said, said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, that this night before the cock crowed, thou shalt deny me thrice. Peter said unto him, Though I should die, with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise also said his disciples. <clears throat> How many times in our life have we said nothing will separate me from my God? How many times in our life have we prayed and sought God's face and we thought we were strong in the Lord? Mm -hmm. And we really thought that we had something with God. And we really thought that we were walking with God to find ourselves to let the world pull us to the side. That's right. You see, Peter really thought he was strong in the Lord. Peter really thought he had something with God. He did have something with God. But he didn't have the strength that he needed to stand. Mm -hmm. You and I need some more strength to stand in these last days. We all know that that night, Peter denied Christ thrice. Mm -hmm. We all know that he stood before the fire and lied. Now look, whenever you tell somebody you're going to do something for Christ and you don't do it, you know what it is? It's a lie. Mm -hmm. And there's people that have lied to God. There's people that have stood before God and lied to him. I believe it's a stink in God's stomach anymore to hear people stand up in church and they have claimed victory through Jesus. They have claimed the blessings of God. They have claimed to be sanctified. They have claimed to have the power of the Holy Ghost. And then all of a sudden you'll see them running up and down the roads doing things they shouldn't do. They're living in ways that they shouldn't live. And they're almost proud of it. Mm -hmm. We live in a wicked place in our time with Jesus Christ because it's the same as it was whenever they were getting ready to crucify Jesus. Yep. The spirit that should be strong, the spirit that should be full of the Holy Ghost, the power of God moving up and down people's spies, Amen. now have become lemonade or jelly, I reckon you might say, mm. up in people's spines. And they're denying Christ, they're turning from Christ because they're running from something that they think will take their life. They're running for something that will cause them to die. And I can tell you, there's worse than dying. Losing your soul is the worst thing you can have happen to you. If I tell you, you can be alive all your life and not ever know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior or turn your back on Him. And honey, you're in worse shape than you were if you were laying here in a casket That's this right. and full of God. Because I want to tell you something. Whenever you face Jesus, great white throne of judgment, mm -hmm. it's going to be the worst thing that's ever happened in your life. Amen. I, you can get mad with the disciples if you want to. You can get mad with people that's not going to church if you want to. And you can say, well, you know, they're, they don't care. They do care. Peter cared. He loved the Lord. There's people today that love the Lord and aren't here. That's right. But what they've done, they've allowed the devil to paint them a picture. You've got to get out of the picture. You've got to get into the real salvation of God. There's nothing perfect in salvation except Jesus Christ. Amen. You and I mess up the perfection of it. You understand what I'm trying right. to say this morning? You and I, whenever we get saved, we, become, we come down to an altar, we get saved... Everything's going so good for us. We feel like we could just win the whole world. 
And then all of a sudden somebody starts talking down to us and telling us they were saved and now that we'll be back like them. And the first thing you know, you're, it's just like the winds have went out of your sails. Mm -hmm. And your sails have almost collapsed. Mm -hmm. You feel like everything around you is just collapsing. Because everybody else in church is agreeing with you. Praise God, you've got, you've got a new challenge now. Everything's going wonderful. And then you go out and you meet the world. You see, that's what's happened to people today. They've met the world or the devil. Right. It's easy to say, I love the Lord, and stay in your pajamas. Bless him, Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But whenever you got to get up and come to church and make a sacrifice, you say, Brother Ken, you're preaching to the choir this morning. I'm preaching to you this morning because the devil's fighting you with the same situation. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's fighting you on every turn. So that's what the Lord spoke to me about last night. He's trying to get you to fall into the same trap that the world's fell into. We came by churches this morning. The doors are still closed. Mm. Our governor says they can be open. Yep. What's their excuse today? What's their excuse today for the people that's not here today? They have no excuse. The governor's the one that shut it down. Now he's opened it back up. That's right. So praise God, it lies on their soul. Mm -hmm. But you see, it lied on their soul before, and they weren't realizing it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And you see, Peter denied Christ. He loved God. You and I, we love God, but the devil is trying to get us to deny Christ. The devil is trying to get us to say, oh no, it, it's going to cost our life if we do this. Well, what is your life worth? Without Jesus. Amen. If Jesus, I mean, if really, if Peter would have thought about that, I know God had a plan for Peter. Don't get me wrong. I know God had a plan for Peter. He's got a plan for you, too. Don't worry about that. God's got a plan for you. God's not done with you yet. You say, Brother Ken, you're saying Jesus is coming back. Yeah, but he ain't done with us yet. We still got a world out here that's lost and done. done. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Hey, we need to be winning some of them. I mean, I, 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 was, I, was, I was going to make the announcement this morning. And I didn't, but we ended up with $680 to send all those Bibles, $680 worth of Bibles over to Honduras. You think God wasn't in that? We Amen. Go Amen. Oh. Amen. You see, that's God. That's and that's God. God working. And you say, well, Brother Ken, that's just a little drop in the bucket. Yeah, but if one soul gets saved, it's worth the whole $680. Amen. 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 That's right. It's worth every penny of it. And I just want to praise God for you. I want to praise God Amen. for you working. I want to praise God for you giving up some of your monies. I want to praise God for you blessing the people over there. Because I'm going to tell you something. God's good. His blessings are good. And if we don't put him first in our life, and we don't start putting him uh, on the pedestal that he deserves, see, God, God's higher than us. And, and we try to bring him down to our level. He's not at our level. You see, at our level, then we say, well, we're scared to go to church. And we're scared to do this. And we're scared to do that. Whenever they were talking about locking people up, Debbie told me, said, well, maybe we ought to shut down the church for a while. And I thought about it. I said, well, we can. And we did for a couple of weeks. But in my heart, the Lord was telling me there's no time to do this. There's no time to start. And I feel like I did some things wrong by doing that. If I would have been locked up, I should have been better than Peter. I should have said, no matter what, the church is going to stay open. I have to lay some of the blame on Ken. You say, well, Ken, they ain't coming now, and you're worried about them. Let me tell you what. Whenever we look at this, we need to take a good look at our Savior. Amen. And see what we've said through this. Have we been defiling of God, or have we uplifted God? That's right. And that's what we need to do. You see, Peter... In his mind, he was uplifting Jesus. But in his heart, it was far from it. Let me read on here just a little further. I want to go on down to where they were in the Garden of Gethsemane here, if you'll let me. And it says, Then cometh Jesus with them unto a place. Now, let me read this 35th verse one more time. Peter said unto him, Though I should die with thee, yet will I not deny thee. Likewise, also said all the all of them. All of them. Now, we're going to go down to the next few verses. Then cometh Jesus with the 
Elysium unto a place called Gethsemane, and saith unto his disciples, Sit ye here while I go and pray yonder. And he took with him Peter and two of the sons of Zebedee, and began to be sorrowful and very heavy. Then saith he unto them, My soul is exceedingly sorrowful, even unto death. Tarry ye here and watch with me. He didn't say, Tarry ye here and don't worry about me. But he was saying, Tarry ye here and pray for me. Right. Tarry ye here and seek God's face for me. Now, the disciples had just said in verse 35, is it 35? Uh -huh. yep. We'll not deny you, Jesus, but we'll be with you. Now, he's just asking them to pray. He's not asking them to go in their pocket and drag out money. He's not asking them to go in there and any, do anything great. All he's asking them to do is just keep your eyes open and pray. Hmm. And he went a little further and fell on his face and prayed, saying, O oh, my Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. And I know he said more than that. I know he prayed and he saw God's face on this behalf. But this was some of the words that they had pinned down. And he goes back. And he cometh unto the disciples and find them asleep. And saith unto Peter, What, could you not watch with me one hour? I've heard this preached on many times, but I can see it today. There are people that are trying to lead other people not to go to church to make themselves look good. That's right. You might think I'm wrong, but I'm telling you the truth. That's right. That's right. God spoke to me last night and said there's people out here that are leading the other people. Lord help us. Keep them strong. They're calling other people devils. And it's in them. They better take a good look. That's right. Because guess what? The disciples said, Lord, I'll never deny you. I'll be with you. I'll do whatever you ask me to do. One hour later, not two hours later, not ten hours later, one hour later, they were asleep, not praying. And all he asked them to do was pray. That's right. How many times has God asked us to do something? I'm speaking out, but be honest with me now. How many times has God asked you to do something for him? And you said, Lord, I'll do it. But whenever it started happening, you started complaining. Mm. Because you had to go somewhere, because you had to do some things. Just be honest. We are a sorry nation. For a God. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. I'm so blessed. Church, you say, Brother King, you're chewing us out this morning. No, I'm not. What I want to do is reach down a little lower below the chewing, and I want to turn the light, the flame up a little bit. You know, yes. you know, whenever the, whenever they used to do uh, bullocks and Elijah, 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 whenever he was on the hillside, and they were getting ready to sacrifice the bullock. How many of you remember he brought in the, all those barrels of water mm -hmm. and poured on them? And the reason he did that was because they had people that would make out like they could burn up bullocks and things like this. But what they would do, they would pile those rocks up and way down into the ground, just where a little oxygen could mm -hmm. get to, they would set a flame of fire under there. And whenever they would start praying, they would go over to that little flame and they would have a way where they could get the oxygen into that little flame. And as they were praying, that flame would start rising up. Amen. And they thought... That these men were God's men. And all they were was just full of the devil. So Elijah says, bring in all this water, dig a ditch, and pour all this water on the bullocks. And then the fire fell, not from underneath the altar and burn it up, mm -hmm. but it fell from heaven mm -hmm. and burn it all up. You see, that's the God we're serving. Amen. And we forget that sometimes. We forget that our God is the God that answers by fire, but the fire is not coming up from underneath. It's coming out of heaven, and praise God, 
you and I need to look up because that's where our redemption draws nigh. We don't need to be like Peter here and say, Lord, I'll do whatever you bid me to do, Lord. Lord, I'll bless you, Lord. I'll help you, Lord. And then all of a sudden, nobody will do anything. You say, Brother Ken, I'll do whatever the Lord wants me to do. I'm going to back you up a little bit. And I'm going to ask, will you do whatever the Lord wants you to do? And then I'm going to say this. I said a few weeks ago, I need some Sunday school teachers. Because I've got young people that's coming that need to be taught. That's right. How many people do you think has come to me and said, Brother Ken, I'm not really capable of teaching Sunday school, but God spoke to me, and I want to do something. How many people do you think has come to me? None. None. Yep. And God spoke to some of you. I believe that with all my heart. Some of you that ain't even coming to Sunday school. You ain't bringing your family to Sunday school. And God knows that Sunday school is needful. Yes, it is. Because you're taught things that you won't hear during preaching time. I try to teach a lot of different things during preaching time, but a lot of times I get my mind set on the direction I'm trying to go, and I can't teach you all about the Bible. But during Sunday school, there's a lot of times that you can be taught things that no otherwise would be taught. There's teenagers in this church that needs time that they can sit down and talk to somebody about things that's going on in their life that they could be prayed about and they could, yes. that the Lord can move upon those things. But nobody has stepped up to the plate. You say, now wait a minute, kid. I, I, I won't deny Christ. I'll do whatever God bids me to do. Will you? You say, well, I'm a teacher. How do you know? You'll find out quick enough. But we find ourselves saying we'll do things that we don't do. We say we'll promise God anything, but then whenever it comes right down to where it meets, we don't do any of it. You say, well, I'm not with God good enough to do those things. Hey, we got an altar here. Amen. Did you know that you could come to this altar and receive from God? Did you know that you Amen. can come and repent of any sin that you've ever committed and God will forgive you for it That's except right. for blaspheming against the Holy Ghost? Right. Woo! Glory. What a vision from God! Mm -hmm. You had never heard that before, had you? Any of our service just about. Mm -hmm. Because we hear what we want to hear. That's right. Amen. Exactly. And we do what we want to do from God. Mm -hmm. We're like the disciples. We want the name of being a good Christian. We want the name of being a good godly person. But whenever it comes right down to where the rubber meets the road, we're dirty. Mm. We're dirty. We're not doing what God's called us to do. Let me read on. Those times are good. Watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. And the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. He went away again the second time and prayed, prayed, saying, O oh my Father, if this cup may not pass away from me, except I drink it, thy will be done. Mm -hmm. And he came and found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Maybe that's the reason nobody's offered to take a teenage class or a younger class. It's because your eyes are heavy. Maybe you're tired on Sunday morning. You know, it's easy to sleep on Sunday morning. I don't know. I can't say that because most time on Sunday morning, I'm up earlier than I am on here. Mm -hmm. But maybe your eyes are heavy on Sunday morning. Maybe, maybe you can really sleep good on Sunday morning. And you know, during the week, you're going to have to take out some time. And you're going to have to study a little bit on that lesson. And you know how busy you are. You just ain't going to have time. Boy, the devil's got every excuse in the world. Yes, he does. 
Why do you think the disciples were asleep? You know, you want to talk about the disciples, you want to run them down. Why do you think they were asleep? Because the same devil that was fighting them is fighting us today. <coughs> the same devil that was coming against them, uh, you today is coming against them. And that's the reason they could not do what they were supposed to do in a lot of ways because they didn't have the power of God moving upon them because they weren't praying, they weren't seeking God's faith. You say, Brother Kim, they followed Jesus everywhere. You know that they were tired. You know they were tired because people were pressing in to be around him and all these things. Well, let me tell you something, honey. We've got plenty of time that we can rest whenever we go into the ground. It's time Amen. now to win the laws. It's time now to stand up and say, Holy Ghost, move on me and give me power to preach and teach and do the things that I need to do to win the laws to God. Lord help us. And he left them and went away again and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then cometh he to his disciples and saith unto them, Sleep on now and take your rest. Behold, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is to be betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us, going, let us be going. Behold, he is at hand that doth betray me. Mm -hmm. hey. We're close. We are very close to the return of Christ. Yep. And we've all used this, this no excuse. Well, I'm doing more than the rest of them. At least I am coming to church. <coughs> but are we really doing more? Are we really praying? Are we really seeking God's face? Are we just saying, because I showed up, everything's good? Because I've been here and I've been a part of this thing, everything's good in my life. Sickness is going to come. We're all going to have sickness. That's right. The devil is fighting every one of us. He don't want you to find happiness. He'll fight you every way he can. It's either going to be spiritually, financially, physically. But some way or another, he's going to try and put a briar or a thorn in the side as possible mm -hmm. into your life. Yep. And if we're going to be a beacon crying out in the middle of the wilderness, if we're going to be different than the world, if we're going to be the ones that, whenever this world's on fire, that we're standing, then we're going to have to make up our minds. If nobody ever comes back, if nobody else ever comes, Dry. I'll find some leopards that were sitting outside of the gate. They said they had two choices. They were hungry. Nobody was bringing food out because they was run out of the city because they were leopards. If they went into the city, that would cause other people to have leprosy. So they'd run them out and put them at the gate. In the eve time, they would bring them food. Well, there was a famine inside the city, so nobody was bringing food. So they're sitting there, and their belly button's touching their backbone. And they had to make a decision. They went into the city. There was a famine in the city. There wasn't no food there. There wasn't nothing to eat. Pretty bad decision in my book. But if they went into the enemy's camp, they had plenty of food, had plenty of money and things to buy food with, and they could capitalize on them and either put them in bondage or maybe even kill them. But they had a choice to make. I think we got a choice to make today. You say, Brother Ken, you're acting desperate today. I am sort of desperate. 
Because I am tired of seeing the devil steal people's souls. That's right. I am tired of the devil deceiving people. Mm -hmm. They've got a choice. They can sit there and dry up, or either they can get up with Jesus mm -hmm. and go home. These people went into the enemy's camp. God went with them, caused the noise of a great army. All the people in the tents heard this great army's coming. Just a few little men <laughs> with leprosy walking down the road. And here comes this great sound. And God caused the sound. All of them run out of their tents, left their food of cooking, left everything in there just like it was, didn't pick up a thing, just flee. And here walks in these men, fill their bellies, go into one tent and hide it in the wilderness, go into another tent, hide it in the wilderness. Then they decided, hey, you know what? We'll just go into the city and let them know that there's some food over here and there's some things over here that would help them along the way. Right. Hmm. See, I get upset with people and I think, well, why should I even worry? But see, these leopard men had been left alone at the end of the city and no food brought to them because there was famine in the land and they were worried about the people that weren't sick that didn't have anything wrong with them more than they were the people with the leprosy. But still, whenever God blessed them, they wanted to be blessed somebody else. Hey, I'm the same way. If God blesses me, I'm going to bless somebody else. Mm -hmm. Amen. You might think I come to church every Sunday morning to receive a check. <coughs> or whenever I get paid. You might think the only reason I preach is to get paid. I preach because God called me to preach. Amen. I preached a long time at this church in times without money. Money does not motivate my preaching. Money does not cause me to stand before you and preach a different way. If you put more in the pot and you say, well, he'll preach not against me anymore. Well, look out. If God gives me the message, it's coming your way. That's right. That's what it should be. And I'm not worried about what people think about me. But I want you to know this. That we need to stir ourselves. Yes. I look at Peter and I look at all the things that Peter had done and how he had denied Christ. But then whenever I go to second act, And Jesus told them to go to the upper room. Mm -hmm. 500 people went to the upper room. 120 carried. <laughs> 120 waited on the blessing. Amen. 120 had their minds made up that they weren't going to leave until they seen the movement of God. Well, Sunday morning around 12 o'clock, you can tell sometimes... People are ready to have a movement of the food because they're ready to go home. Yeah. Sunday night, people want to have a movement of go home and watch TV. You can tell that sometimes. What we really need in this church, I'm serious about this, we need a movement of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And I'm talking about a pure, clean movement of the Holy Ghost. We need to see the Holy Ghost yes. manifested in our church. And you say, Brother Ken just wants people to run up and down the aisle and shout, Brother Ken just wants people to roll oh, out God the floor and all these things. I'm talking about a movement of the Holy Ghost where people come back to God. Amen. I'm talking about a movement of the Holy Ghost yes. where people yes. get in the altar and fight behind the fire of God falling on their heads. I'm talking about people that are getting the altar and they'll tarry until God moves. That's what I'm talking about. Church, if we're going to ever have a church here, we can't depend on everybody else that's not here. But what we've got to do, we've got to look at ourselves. There wasn't but just a few people with Jesus. And he had to look upon them, and every one of them failed him at the time. I'm looking upon you this morning, and I'm not looking for you to fail me, but I'm looking for you to get a, a one oneness with God, and I'm looking for you to get a one oneness with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And let the power of God move up and down your spine and use you in these last days. God is calling us to repent us. God is calling us to have the blessings of the Holy Ghost upon our life. That's right. We need to make up our minds what we're going to do and 
do it quick. I feel in my heart we've only got a short time to work. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to have God in your heart, you're going to have the mind of Christ, you better do it today. He's soon coming. Will you please, with me, pray for our church, pray for our soul. Amen. Pray for your brother's soul. Pray for your sister's soul. Yes. Pray for your own soul. But we need to pray for one another. Amen. That's right. Because each and every one of us are not perfect. We all need this God. Stay with us. It's good to have you. I hope I haven't been too tough on you today. I hope I've, been, I've just been honest with you today. I just preach what God has given me in the middle of the night. I don't like it. You're going to take it over God. That's right. I was sleeping with that stupid mask on, too. Don't think I would. <laughs> <laughs> They're terrible. No, I love it. But the machine is not working right. It cuts off on me in the middle of the night. It didn't last night. Sometimes it cut off me in the, in the middle of the night, and there's no oxygen in that hose but just a little bit. And you'll be there, and you ain't breathing nothing. Mm -hmm. And I grab that thing on my head and give it a sling. Because <laughs> I can't breathe. And I'm going to talk to him and find out why it's cutting off in the middle of the night. <laughs> but it does make me feel better. And I thank God for it. I love you. I love you as a church. I did not speak this to you this morning to make you feel bad or upset you. I spoke this to you this morning because... There's a Lord that's coming. Yes, it is. And we need to get ready. Right. We need to be obedient. Peter thought he was obedient. Peter thought he wouldn't deny Christ. <clears throat> but he did. We sat around with our brags and what we would do and what we wouldn't do. But whenever it gets right down to it, what would we do? We would be obey Christ and do whatever God wants us to do. We bless the teenagers and the young people in our church for the Sunday school class. You say, Brother Ken, they ain't coming. I wouldn't come either. I wonder if they didn't. That's true. But I'm just honest. I'm just honest. That's all true. I'd wake up in a world where the Spirit of Jesus had been drawn out. Turn back to the Jew. No way to repent. No way to call upon the name of the Lord. No way to get ready. Sounds like the heartless thing that could ever happen in your life. One of these days that's going to happen to you. They're going to think they've done right. They're going to think they've served God and they say, well, I, I'm going to obey God and I'm going to do what God tells me to do. How can God tell you to do something if you aren't obeying to start off with? That's right. You're lying to yourself. Mm -hmm. You're lying to yourself. Because I've been in this church. I've seen God bid people to come to the altar. Seen Him speak to them. Seen Him draw back and hold back. Shame to come. You don't have to go down. I'm ashamed to get down there and roll all the way to the back door if I had to or push a penny back there with my nose. I'd do it. I would be ashamed to do it. I've read what hell is, and it ain't no place for me. And it ain't no place for you. Make sure you're ready to meet Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of the Spirit. God, I believe in no Lord that you're the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I speak peace to you. I ask you, Lord, to move upon each and every person that's here, God. 
Yeah, do you know the names in the 